porn made me do it. I have no idea what that post was about. <laughs> I thought that, that image was pretty funny. Greetings, friends and foes, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Did you miss me? Well, whether you missed me or not, I have some exciting new content for you. No, not that kind of exciting. Do you guys remember the blog Biblical Gender Roles? We did review a few posts from it like months ago on my channel. It's uh, pretty hard to forget, in the worst way possible. But today we're not going to be looking at the blog because I don't want to read that much. I'm like terrible at reading out loud. I'm bad at speaking out loud in general. Like the amount of like, you know, retakes and like things I have to cut out when I'm editing these videos because like I just stumble on my words so much is like insane. But anyways, today we're going to be reacting to Biblical Gender Roles, um, their Instagram page. It's no less atrocious exactly, but it's smaller portions to take in so you don't like overdose. And quick disclaimer, following gender roles is not inherently bad. It is only bad when you shame other people for not following said gender roles. Nothing wrong with gender roles, it's just your opinions on them that matter. Just live and let live, basically, which is not what this dude is doing at all. Um, so this was a tweet made by the transformed wife in which she was basically stating that a wife's submission is like completely voluntary and that she's not being forced to, to like submit to her husband. And this guy reposted the tweet and said, Wrong! The submission of a wife is mandatory, not voluntary. A husband can and must enforce his authority with his wife through right biblical now. discipline. Oh my god, is he talking about Christian domestic discipline? Thanking. To, to do that? Because he's made a few posts about it on his blog. Do that to his wife because she's like too much of a feminist and won't let him do it. Not letting your partner hit you does not- Which, by the way, um, not letting your partner hit you does not make you a feminist. Hello, me editing here. Um, I wanted to clarify what I meant when I said it's the bare minimum, because I do understand that there are probably a lot of couples who are in um, healthy domestic discipline relationships who genuinely enjoy it, and it's not something that they're pressured into, it's just what they like to do, and I respect that. If you're a consenting adult and you like to do that, you do you by all means. But in this case specifically, I don't think that this is consensual because it seems like these women are kind of groomed into it. Like, it's something that they see happening to other women in their lives growing up, and it's kind of, like, you know, taught to them that they, as a woman, they have to submit to their husband, and if they don't submit, he has every right to make them submit. Like, that's kind of what they're taught growing up. So I don't think that it can be labeled as consensual because they're pressured into it, and they're groomed into it, and they're told they have no choice, really. So I don't think this is consensual, but, like, I'm not talking about, like, all relationships like this. I'm specifically talking about the ones that this man is referring to. Though she is submissive, like still has a little bit of feminism in her, so she won't let him smack her. And the All right. That's it is because um, he said that men have to be careful nowadays disciplining their wife because if they assault their wife, they might get charged with assault. So, you know his beliefs are shocker, I know, terrible, when he's like criticizing the transformed wife for not being radical enough. The work she does being a world- Although he did clarify in the caption that she is a godly woman and he does appreciate the work she does being a world-class pick-me girl or something, like, I'll give you a medal if it'll make you be quiet. Divorce is wrong. Breaking up is okay. Starting over is okay. Moving on is okay. Being alone is okay. But what is right is staying somewhere where you are not valued and appreciated. I'm sorry, this looks like a meme or something. <laughs> like, this looks like satire. When I first stumbled upon this guy's blog, I was kind of conflicted over whether or not it's satire because I was like, okay, like surely nobody can be this disgusting. But the more I read it, he would like answer questions and talk about things. And whenever he like talked about certain issues, he would make like long, like lengthy posts about it, bring in Bible verses. And he seemed like very educated whenever he like spoke about it and stuff. Like, no, not, not that he's intelligent. He seemed to be writing in a very serious manner and like it definitely wasn't sarcasm. Like, nobody who's doing this as a joke would put this much effort into it. And people would actually email him, you know, and like ask for advice and things, and he would give them terrible advice. And I would think that like, if he was doing it as satire, and, people, and then he realized that people were actually listening to him, and abusing their wives, and being terrible people because of him, he would stop. But anyways, he's literally telling his audience to stay in a relationship where they are not loved. I thought you were supposed to love your spouse, like doesn't God say to like, love thy neighbor and love thy spouse? Like, God wants you to appreciate your partner, right? Yes, divorce isn't ideal. Nobody stands on the altar waiting to get married and then thinks, wow, I can't wait to divorce you in a few months and escape the oppressive construct of a nuclear family because I'm a feminist. Yeah, I'm sure there are people who get divorced over stupid reasons, but divorce is necessary in a lot of cases. To me, I think divorce is necessary if you're being abused, if your partner doesn't love and appreciate you, if your partner doesn't listen to you, if you're in a dangerous situation in general, or if you find yourself very unhappy around your partner all the time. 
I don't mean if you have like an argument or something. I mean that if the unhappy days outweigh the happy days. Like if it's rare for you to get along with your partner. Maybe he treats his wife like crap. This is just his way of like manipulating her into not leaving him. I don't know. Engaged at 18, married at 19, pregnant at 20, first child at 21, second child on the way. The greatest threat to feminism is women who are stay-at-home moms by conviction. Okay, this post irritated me because I think he's misrepresenting this woman. He's talking about this TikToker by the name of like the reserved wife. She's basically a stay-at-home mom who likes, you know, taking care of household chores, cooking for her husband, you know, stay-at-home mom stuff. And I checked out her page and she seems pretty cool. She seems really nice and really loving and a career passage wasn't for her. That's fine. She has stated that she gets a lot of hate from like people t saying that she's like a slave for her husband or stuff like that, which is completely wrong. She's not a slave for her husband. She chooses this lifestyle because she enjoys it. And I think that it's awful that she's getting those hate comments. She seems happy, so why should people care? I don't know if those are feminists or just trolls that are doing that because like I follow a lot of feminists and I follow a lot of feminist pages and I've never seen one of them like shame women for being stay-at-home moms. I've never seen that. Like, all I've seen is support for choice. Like, I've never seen, like, a feminist, like, directly shame women for staying at home. So I think those are just trolls. Or some radical feminist who don't understand what feminism is. I feel bad for her because of this post. Because, like, she doesn't seem to think that it's a woman's place at home. She just prefers to be there. And I don't think she would like this guy because of all of his radical opinions. I don't think she would agree based on her videos. Because she seems to support women no matter what. So I think that she would be pretty insulted if she saw that this guy was supporting her. Because I don't think they align at all. I'm going to put her TikTok up here so you guys can follow her because she's pretty cool. It is impossible for a wife to spoil her husband. Okay, so he basically in the caption he explained that um, it's not possible for a wife to spoil her husband because she is not an authority figure over him. Because he is an authority figure over her and she is subordinate to him. So therefore she cannot spoil him. He can spoil her, but she can't spoil him. And although spoiled is a term we usually use for children, I do definitely think that you can spoil your spouse. I don't think that buying somebody a ton of gifts is necessarily spoiling them because spoiling has negative connotations to it. And like, if you have the money for it and they appreciate the gifts, who cares? To me, I think spoiling is when somebody you love does bad things and you like don't criticize them or don't hold them accountable for their actions. Like if your child or your friend or your partner or whoever like that's related to you in some way like keeps like you know making mistakes and doing bad things hurting people and you keep making excuses for them and you don't say hey what you're doing is wrong and as somebody who loves you i need to let you know that would be spoiling so it is possible for a husband to spoil his wife and it's possible for a wife to spoil her husband if her husband is making bad decisions being unethical being a bad person in general and she keeps making excuses for him and not holding him accountable that's her spoiling him but i love how he's making this post and basically saying like oh i don't have to give you whatever you want because i don't want to spoil you oh you still have to give me whatever i want because you can't spoil me it's impossible to spoil me like the misogyny is so intense and he wants it that way like, I don't even know how to change this guy's mind, because a lot of people, if you tell them that they're being misogynistic, they're like, no, no, I'm not. But this guy, if I were to come up to him and say, hey, you're being misogynistic and really sexist, his response would be, that's actually the whole point. Like, I think he's too far gone by now. But luckily, I think he has a small enough platform to where most people are just making fun of him. Does the Bible require that women only wear dresses? Okay, I'm not going to read the caption because I remember seeing a blog post from him about this issue and he was basically saying like, oh, some people say that Christian women should only wear dresses, but my wife's butt looks good in jeans, so I let her wear them. Like, I remember he was like, oh, that was a cultural thing back then. Okay, and misogyny wasn't. Make it make sense. We should be concerned about the large-scale absence of male authority in the household rather than the small-scale abuse of it. Okay, when he says male authority in the household, is he talking about, like, men in general or, like, dominant men? Because if it's the first one, I have literally never heard somebody say, we should abolish the nuclear family because men suck. That is not an argument that, like, that anybody has ever made. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, what is it with these people thinking that, like, everybody wants to get rid of the nuclear household? That everybody hates two-parent households? I definitely do not hate two-parent households. I envy them. Any type of household is fine as long as everybody is happy and healthy and getting their needs met. Just because we don't like hate on divorced parents or single parents doesn't mean that we hate nuclear families. We're just saying it's okay not to be one. Your family isn't doomed if you're not a nuclear family. When you're talking about male authority, I definitely think that every member of the household should have a voice, even the kids. 
I think that the parents should have like more of a voice, obviously. You know, because children's brains aren't, aren't developed and they often don't make sound decisions whatever and whatnot. But I think they should still be listened to if they have a proper argument. And I think that like if you're somebody who you know that you're not great at decision making and you trust your partner more, then you should definitely let them like, you know, lead if you want to. Like there are a lot of women that prefer having their husbands lead and that's perfectly fine. And there are a lot of men that like having their wives lead because they think that they are better decision makers and that's fine too. But yes, have all voices heard, listen to your partner, and if your partner wants you to lead, that's fine. But I don't think that like it, this society is doomed if, you know, they don't have a male authority in the household. So that's all we're going to be reacting to today because this stuff is a lot more than I can handle. Thank you all for watching this video, even though you definitely didn't enjoy it. It was terrible. I hated it every second of it. This man is the actual worst. And I want to know where he lives so I can never go there. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Please comment on some suggestions for a future video because I'm running out of ideas. Trust me, I would not have subjected myself to this torture if I didn't have other ideas. And I will see you guys next time. Stay safe, y'all.